How you getting everybody? For those who watch the, the clock up there, you'll notice it's only a couple of minutes since we read the last chapter. So we'll read one more tonight. Chapter 10. How Reddy Fox investigated. It's a big one. Big question. Investigate if you would know that something is or isn't so. From Bowser the Hound. The investigate something means, oh, I'm sorry, to investigate something means to try to find out about it. Reddy Fox had heard from so many different ones about the disappearance of Bowser that he finally made up his mind he would investigate and find out for himself if it were true that Bowser was no longer at home in Farmer Brown's dooryard. If it were true, well, Reddy had certain plans of his own in regard to Farmer Brown's hen house. I better know what that means, don't you? Try to get himself a hen for a meal. Reddy had begun by doubting that story because it seemed to have come first from Old Man Coyote. Reddy would doubt anything with which Old Man Coyote was concerned. But Reddy had finally come to believe that something certainly had happened because half a dozen times during the day he had heard Farmer Brown's boy whistle and whistle and call and call. Just as soon as the black shadows came creeping out from the purple hills, Reddy started up toward Farmer Brown's. He didn't go directly there, because he never goes directly anywhere if there is the least chance in the world that anyone ugh, may be watching him. But as he slipped along in the blackest of the black shadows, he was all the time working nearer and nearer to Farmer Brown's dooryard. Although he was inclined to think it was true that Bowser was not there, he was far too wise to take any unnecessary risk. He approached Farmer Brown's dooryard just as carefully as if he knew Bowser to be in his little house as usual. He kept in the black shadows. He crouched so low he seemed hardly more than a mere black shadow himself. Every two or three steps he stopped to look, listen, and test the air with his keen nose. As he drew near Bowser's own little house, Reddy circled out around it till he could see the doorway. Then he sat down where he could peek around from behind a tree and watch. He had been there only a few minutes when the back door of Farmer Brown's house opened and Farmer Brown's boy stepped out. Reddy didn't run. He knew that Farmer Brown's boy would never dream that he would dare come so near. Besides, it was very clear that Farmer Brown's boy was thinking of no one but Bowser. He whistled and called, just as he had done several times during the day, but no Bowser came. So after a while, Farmer Brown's boy went back into the house. There was a worried look on his face. As soon as he heard the door close, Reddy trotted right out in the open and sat down only a few feet from the blank doorway of Bowser's little house. Reddy backed softly. Then he backed a little louder. He knew that if Bowser were at home, that back would bring him out if nothing else did. Bowser didn't appear. Reddy grinned. He was sure now that Bowser was nowhere about. Chuckling to himself, he turned and trotted towards Farmer Brown's hen house. I think we know what that means. And that's the end of that chapter. Read another one tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody.